Oh shit, ladies and gentlemen, how are you doing out there? This is Intergalactic Interviews, and this is episode 136, right back from the dead, right back where I left ya. Ooh-wah. And uh, those of you who don't understand why I'm saying this is because this show almost didn't fucking happen. It didn't happen <laughs> for many reasons. One of the reasons is that... One hour late to we, start. We are dumb. We're not that dumb. But goddamn, I, if I could throw every computer into a magnet bath, I would love it. <laughs> it would be amazing. That being said, by the miracles of computer, welcome to the show, everyone. How you doing? Did you have a good week? I think we had a fantastic week. I had a goddamn good week. You know what I did? I got to see CKY last week. Are you pre-claiming a good week? Uh, this next week is going to be even better. <laughs> That's how you take care of business. Uh, I got to see CKY. I got to meet Chad I. Ginsburg, who is now currently lead singer and uh, guitar player for uh, CKY ever since uh, Darren Miller left. And uh, I had the chance to meet him, and the show was sold out. It was amazing. Fucking beautiful uh, set list. It was so good. It was like mostly Infiltrate, Destroy, Rebuild, uh, which mm. is their debut album, and well, I, well except volume one. But I want to get super CKY nerd on you. <laughs> but that being said, it was an amazing show. And uh, I got to meet Chad I. Ginsburg, and people at home do not know this, but one of the major, major, main influences of Intergalactic Interviews is the work that Chad I. Ginsburg, as a producer, did on Radio BAM, which was a long-running Sirius XM radio satellite show. So uh, being able to tell him that he was like pretty much responsible for a lot of what you guys are hearing right now was a super, super huge moment for me. And uh, I don't know, just getting to meet the guy that produced some of my favorite music ever growing mm. up is pretty cool. And, and uh, yeah, the band was just sounded so tight. I don't know. I've never seen them have so much fun on stage. It was like the best, best set. I was like hurting myself smiling. It felt really good. Right. But now you guys know that. And I think I left you on that. I think it's about time uh, I introduce our guest. I'll introduce our guest and then I'll let you know about an amazing offer. How about that for a teaser? You don't want to miss it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our guest <laughs> is returning to the show. Hasn't been on the show, and I'm gonna. I don't even know the episode number. I think number. it's 100. I think it's been about 100 episodes. That'd be fucking crazy if it was actually 100. I have mm-hmm. no idea. But it's been about 100 episodes since our guest has uh, been on the show. He's a very long, long term friend of mine, very good friend, one of my best friends. Uh, we've known each other forever. Uh, he's an actor. He's a thespian. <laughs> and uh, he's one of uh, one of the best dudes I know. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Steven Lingren. How you doing, <laughs> folks? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Hey, brother. I appreciate you coming to do the show. It's short notice and waiting patiently while we sorted out all the IT patiently, issues. Patiently. Good thing we have Seamart the asset here, <laughs> ready to just finalize and fix everything. We were putting our jackets on like, ah, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's a wrap. And then uh, you came in. But you're a union, so we didn't want to pay you twice. And that's why uh, we didn't, <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to do it. Uh, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. Thanks for uh, watching our cats last week. No problem. They're very friendly cats you have. They're pretty good. <laughs> Stephen Lingren watched... Uh, they're large, though. They're big, right? Yeah, Steve, Stephen Lingren watched our cats last week while Liz and I <laughs> attended a wedding out of town, and uh, I, uh, I was emceeing a wedding. It was beautiful, beautiful. It was like... Honestly, the location was very reminiscent of, like, Godfather... It, was, it felt like the Godfather theme was playing the whole time. Like It was like <laughs> this Mediterranean villa. Was it playing the whole time? It was beautiful. Oh, okay. It was beautiful. <laughs> Mario Puza was walking in the background. It was amazing. But uh, it, no, it was so beautiful, though, because like, it's all like beautiful like white sandstone. And uh, the views were impeccable, like like these giant, giant panoramic views of, of Skaha Lake, mm. uh, which is uh, in Penticton, British Columbia, for those of you keeping... Oh, you're in the interior. I didn't ge- know. Geographic. Oh, you didn't know where I went? No. I didn't even know where I was going. I didn't know <laughs> I was going until the day of. We were driving it. That's weird. Was it I, secret? I thought we were going to Pemberton. And then they're like, no, we're going to Penticton. And I was like, I don't You really know. weren't listening when they told you then. <laughs> That's what you told no. me. You're like, uh, Pemberton? We're taking a shuttle. Yeah, we're matter. just taking a shuttle. <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm jumping in like a, like a vehicle. And I, I hope That's that a it decent gets drive. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was about four hours, five hours or so. Yeah. It was good. We, we didn't have any traffic, though, so it was nice. But uh, that, that whole ride was nothing short of uh, me just being like, Oh yeah, I signed up to MC this thing. Like, <laughs> I'm like, great. And people are asking me the whole time. They're like, oh, you uh, you MC a lot? And I was like, I've never MC'd a wedding ever. So I had people like messaging me like 11th hour stuff. Like, bro, do you know how serious this is? Like, people are like, you know, 
investing their money in this. And I'm like, uh, well, I hope it turns out okay. <laughs> what are you do? <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, they didn't ask me for references, so like yeah. I just came in. Like, hopefully it's okay. How did I you know? A wedding, it was fun as hell. You did? Yeah, it was one of my really close friends. But what was the that experience like? Tell me about it. Well, it was it was great. It was a English French wedding in Quebec. So thankfully, I wow. had the languages. Oh and, yeah, and the uh, duality of Stephen Lingard. Yeah, so it was uh, it was fun. I had a blast actually. I was pretty nervous going up, uh, coming up to the point, but once I got in there, it was fun. And just kind of there was there was moments where we uh, moved the wedding from inside to outside because the rain stopped. So they wanted to have all the shots outside. So oh, all right, everyone, guy. we're going outside. Let's move, move, oh, move. Oh wow! And then we get out there and it pours, but we took pictures in the rain anyways. Shit, be- this was years ago now. You become the lightning rod yeah. for all the communication. You're like, we need to leave this premises immediately. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that's uh, yeah. It was interesting because we were using two locations as three things essentially. So there was a migration to A and then B and then back to A. Mm. And, uh, as people were starting to filter it back to A, it was like, we're not ready yet. So it was like, you had to kind of, yeah. I don't know. It was, yeah. I, when I first started, I got to admit, I felt like I was eating my dick up there. It was really bad <laughs> for the first like 30, 45 seconds. I was like, ah, this is not going the way I envisioned. But then, uh, it just like, it just fell in. Then yeah, you saw Liz fine. in the crowd and she looked at you and you're like, yeah. she believes in me. She believes in me. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I looked at Liz and I was like, she wouldn't be with a loser. And then I was like, I was like oh yeah, here I am being a loser. I was like, yeah. Yeah. No, it, it ended up being okay. I ended up, uh, I went up after, after everything was done, I went up to the bride and groom and I was like, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Yeah, yeah. I apologize. Oh, I apologize. Worse. And they were like, for what? That was perfect. That was, no, that's exactly yeah. what we wanted. I was like, if you're happy, I'm good. I, I just, I felt like uh, the first, Even if like, you shit the bed, they asked you. Fuck it. Uh, they didn't ask me for references. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like, uh, but like, I'd say the first like 45 seconds, I, I felt like, uh, so guys, I'm here for a wedding, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. trying my best. And then the baritone came eventually. Mm-hmm. It was fine. Good. But uh, bro, I got, a, I got a couple things to ask you about. Float house? Uh, oh, we didn't do that. Should I let everyone know really quick about this? I'll just do this real quick. We'll try to make this the condensed version. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about a fantastic offer right now. It's available to you, our listeners. If you go ahead and go to floathouse.ca right now and use our podcast promo code, IIPodcast, you can get yourself 20% off your next float. What? What's an isolation tank, you might ask? Well, it's simply the greatest thing you can use to unlock the mysteries of your mind. (laughs) Unbelievable, right? Or maybe it's just relaxing. You can go ahead and check out and get your own tank, your own uh, personal space, your own, like... uh, uh, your own uh, like it's clean, fresh towels and, and it's it's amazing it's actually the, one of my favorite parts is that it's like such a resourceful team here that works in all the locations of float house it's mm-hmm. really great and if you use our podcast quote uh, that if you use our podcast promo code god damn i flubbed it <laughs> i was looking at steve lingren's dreamy eyes and it made me feel like <laughs> i don't know if i have it in me <laughs> thought, oh yeah let's see <laughs> and uh I, I realized uh if i tell you now the podcast promo code is ii podcast again you might use it. You might benefit yourself. Go to floathouse.ca right now. Use our podcast promo code. Get yourself 20% off your next float. I float. We float. You should float. Check it out. Go to floathouse.ca right now. Yeah, dude. How about that? That was pretty good. That was that super was good. condensed. That yeah. was like, I I felt like there's someone in the back that was like, just pull it out. Let me know. <laughs> more and more. Um, I got a couple things to ask you about. Shoot. Uh, with regards to a lot of the news that's happening recently, in regards of crossover mega motherfucking fights, it mm-hmm. it would be remiss of me. I would be remiss to not bring up McGregor Mayweather. I would love to hear your, like you're a lifelong martial artist. That's true. I would, and you have professional stunt work. That's true. You are a guy who's actually punched people in the face. This and, is true. And uh, also choreographed said allegedly. punches. Allegedly. allegedly. <laughs> so I would love to know your opinion about these fights. I have stacks of opinions. I don't give a shit about my opinion. I want to know about your opinion. I'm sure you've heard it before. It's a, it's a money fight. It's a money fight. Yeah. Do you, feel like, do you feel like this is the type of fight where uh, the fans are winners or losers? The fans are going to win. If you're going to... The people who are going to watch this fight are going to enjoy it. The, the reason they're tuning in is to, is to watch this. This is a big crossover fight. This, this reminds me of the, the Randy Couture. James Tony. Yeah, when James Tony came over. And, you know, I, I, everyone thought it was going to be a big thing. But 
in reality, James Tony didn't stand a chance. It's a different arena, right? I think he got him with a single leg. Yeah. Didn't he? Yeah. A and he single took him down leg and the fight was over. He got him down with a single leg, like, I think it was like a standing ankle lock or something so like that. It was some shitty. It's very similar. Basic. It's just someone else going in, into someone else's arena. And yeah. I'd be stupid to say he doesn't, McGregor does not have a chance. However, it's it's a small I mean, chance. It's a small chance. It's a pretty small. But like, do you think that like I don't know? What do you think? Is Seymour? this a loss for MMA potentially? Like that's what I'm asking. Like, do you think like this this is a negative? I don't yeah. think it's a loss for MMA because I think you've got so many crossover fans now that watch MMA, that watch kickboxing, that watch boxing. That th- these are the people that are going to tune in. I do think it might be a loss for the UFC. I mm-hmm. think that it it might be detracting from their their company. Because right now, boxing is on the outs. Boxing is not creating new stars at the rate that MMA was, but it would be also kind of biased uh, to, to not mention that fact that like MMA is not creating the st- same level no, of stars it was seven years ago. Like that, that's like true. we are definitely in a valley now. You could point out that it's never made as much money as it has right now, of course. But yes, seven years ago though, you had a, a card that was stacked with like. 10 to 11 legends mm-hmm. you know and now you might have 10 to 11 prospects and like two to three marquee names and it's just it's thinning out and it's i know mm-hmm. it's saturation i know it's the amount of cards they're putting out but boxing has had this issue for like 12 13 14 15 years at least like but it has a strong legacy know, i feel like it's true. propped yeah. up by the, That's the right. pe- That's like just this the just the huge history behind it, right? Like, if there's it's how many accessible. movies are there that are like, yeah, no, of you know, like Rocky exists. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's, like, there's a mega difference between uh, Rocky and <laughs> Here Comes the Boom. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a major difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, you know, you you touched on something there though, Seymour, that makes sense, which is like the accessibility, the accessibility of of the sport. Like, it's not weird. There's no stigma mm-hmm. to watching like pugilists. Like, mm-hmm. there's like Boxing yeah, seems eternal science. on some level. Right. And it's yeah. really, it's almost even, check this out, it's permeated its way into culture and to the point that like you have uh, quote unquote made it as a celebrity if you're like front row at a fight or something, like that mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, did you know that that's how they caught, uh, that's how they caught uh, Allegedly. the guy uh, in American Gangster, what the fuck was his name? The guy that played, uh, the guy that Denzel Washington played in American Gangster, it was based on a real thing. Remember. That he was in front row and he was chatting with Nicky Barnes, who was a legit gangster. And uh, oh, God damn, I can't remember his name. Can you look that up real quick? Sure. Thanks, Seymour. Um, Denzel Washington's character. That's how they caught him, though. Mm-hmm. They were like, who's this guy who's shaking hands in front row with all these guys? He's dressed mm-hmm. in furs. And who the fuck is this? Like, it just caught too many yeah. eyes. That's how they caught him, being front row at a fight. So the McGregor-Mayweather fight. <laughs> <laughs> I want to agree with that. Yeah, Frank watching. Lucas. <laughs> El Frank. Chapo level gangster. Frank like, Lucas. Frank Lucas. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. Yeah. How dare I not remember? Frank that. Lucas. Lucas. He's so good. That was a great film. You watch American yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it actually. I should check it out. You never watch it? No, so I never watched it. Denzel Washington's badass in it. Right? I mean, he's a pretty badass dude yeah. in general. But badass, it, you know, goes in many different directions. And the idea that like Mayweather is a guy on the street that most people could maybe push around, at least, like, yes. you know, get like. Yes, he, he, he will knock you the fuck out. That's Until true. Until he punches you, yeah. Yeah, but like what I'm saying is like <laughs> stature-wise, he's not like Brock Lesnar intimidating. Right, okay. You know, he's not a super heavyweight. Like he's he's this guy that's an amazing I mean, defensive. most people aren't, but yeah. Yeah, but like he's this amazing defensive counterpuncher and mm-hmm. he has this like the, probably the best defensive strategy on the planet. Mm-hmm. And you're going to put him up against a guy that like arguably he's, he's pretty long. Like I don't know, like I don't know if they're – I don't know if that's being really that considered. Like, McGregor is definitely. My heart says McGregor. I want him to just win one, just win one for the kipper. That'd be amazing. But like, my head tells me that this is gonna be a wash. I, I just. It's gonna be a wash. I don't see it happening. I mean, I don't it's, see it's it. So either. it's so so different. Like from from the stance, from from almost everything. It's just. It's two different sports. Yeah. No matter how, no matter how you how you look at it, it's twelve rounds. You know, it's. You had the boxing stance. You know what? I always thought I was thinking that I li- would have liked to see it. You know, kind of meet in the middle mm-hmm. somewhere. Meet in the yeah. middle, do like a kickboxing fight. Of course, Mayweather will never do that. Or alternate you know, he, rules or something. So, something. Some yeah, 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 yeah. You know, Mayweather would like 
snap his little legs on yeah. his fucking just one or two Aldo level kicks and be game over. No, it. but even if you could like allow, yeah, like some kicking or at least like like front kicks or something. You're really or big. Some, on, I don't know. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. really big on oblique kicks. How many oblique kicks do you think Mayweather could take? What's an oblique kick? That's uh, I'll let uh, Slinger and explain it. Well, that's that's kind of I like. I'm actually more into like. The leg kicks. Like then, no, then I, but I just mean like you're the first person who started pointing those out to me. Like you're, like, yeah, yeah. You tell tell C Martin our audience what the fuck that is. An oblique kick. It's when you kick someone in the leg. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> what, is I that mean, all it is? I'm so glad we brought your expertise <laughs> well, to extrapolate that. Well, one thing that they'll teach you in in like any any fight school or any like real street fight is you're not going to be kicking above the waist. You know, mm. and that that goes for like. Generally, in street fight, you don't want to be kicking it at all. But part of that is because it puts you off balance, right? It's right. easy for somebody to just simply move forward if you've got a, a high kick coming up. Yeah. So um, one thing that it does, it allows you to maintain your base while punishing it, well, the, your opponent's base. So I, I don't so you really just know. kick at their legs like low. It's like, it's like low a straight fierce. kick. Yeah, it's like yeah, low fierce <laughs> like street fighter. Yeah, it's low fierce <laughs> kick. <laughs> but like it's like a straight on... Uh, complete 90 degree kick so to speak like yeah. it's like oh it's, it's just, to the front to the front yeah just like, oh, okay. so like when you kick, like kicking at their knees that's it mm-hmm. so you see john jones uh you know definitely Im- implement that into his strategy so you're ready to like ruin a career with no yeah kick. like you can blow a knee mm-hmm. if the guy's not checking it or or not aware that's what i'm saying yeah. like how many of those do you think mayweather would take like he's the well, no it's, no it's a non-issue anyways <laughs> right i mean well, here's the thing. I read that he would be. I read that uh, McGregor is going to get fined out the ass if he uh, if he varies at all from any of the traditional boxing rules set forth by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. So, like, what do you le- mean? like, like, suit out the ass. Like, he might make a hundred million, but he might lose like eighty. But how? How can you? Or something. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, really? What what, are, what rule is he going to break? I don't quite understand. Like, if like he low, decides lows? four rounds in that oh, I can't even get into his shell. I can't even break. So he's his... gonna shoot and try yeah. to take him. No, no, I don't. That's think insane. So. But I don't like think that, so. but you gotta understand the casual fan that is gonna order this. Yeah. Is thinking like, <laughs> is thinking like, how many oblique kicks can he take? Like that's what I'm, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to ask. Yeah. <laughs> like it's it's not un, totally unheard of. I it? mean, but but you know, you might have a point because what he's been training for the majority of his life is MMA, right? Right. And when you get it's into be a instinct. fight, yeah, yeah, it could be instinct. That's what I'm saying. It, it could be memory. instinct to. to to throw a, a knee yeah. or something, because because you have Mayweather doing all the all this head movement that you would never do in MMA. You've got mm-hmm. him coming down down low and moving back and ducking forward the and parries. That, that just would, the par- the just the like the rock back parry of the, just that level mm-hmm. of, of Mayweather defense is like I don't even know like there's no one even to parallel it to in MMA. It's it's like. You have you have well, good strikers. Well, it's not strikers. something you can do in MMA. I know that's the thing. Like you never go down. You might catch a knee. You might, exactly. You might get a take it down. Like you've got so many other things to worry about. I I can't wait. A lot of people are like, I can't wait till they face off. Can't wait till they touch gloves. I can't wait till the first clinch. The first mm. the first clinch from May, it'll, it'll be no Mayweather. There's no elbows either, right? That's right. Obviously, <laughs> Jesus. <Christ. laughs> I'm just saying obviously, but like there's no like, you know. I mean, maybe I don't know. <laughs> like we'll, we'll see, but no, like. Uh, like that first clinch will be engaged by Mayweather in order mm-hmm. to set uh, distance and stuff like that, and uh, I think that like when that happens, that's that's McGregor gonna have to be like, oh man, I can dirty box this dude, like you know, like like what the fuck, like that's that's very intriguing. That, that's interesting because because you see that boxing clinch is very like one under one over, and then they sit there for a while, and generally right. they get broken up. And you get Judge Mills Lane come in, break. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but. You see it in MMA where it's it's a control position, right? You're fighting in that clinch, so yeah. it'll be interesting to see how how uh, McGregor uses his head in that position. That's right. How like you were saying with the dirty boxing, maybe chin the, down. Yeah, chin down, moving his forehead yeah. into his neck or some shit. Yeah, I don't exactly. know. Like it's good. That's why it's so I'm so intriguing because it's never been this. It's it's been the other way. Like we talked about yeah. James, Tony, Randy Couture, and obviously you know we, I think everyone knew that result. But the way people are predicting this, the wild card being that like. McGregor, let's just, okay, let's imagine this for a second, okay? In the unlikely scenario that McGregor knocks out Mayweather, first okay? Round. First, some Only clean, chance. some, like, the thing that, like, everyone said he wouldn't do to Aldo, yeah. and he did it to Aldo in 13 yeah. seconds. Yeah. If that happened, okay, mm-hmm. the level of of fame 
<laughs> okay? Yeah. Like, he's already the yeah. most recognizable MMA guy out there. The level of fame in sport, just pure sport, mm-hmm. it would transcend sport. Yeah. It would be arguably the greatest sports moment of all time. It, like, it would, you, you could say that. You yeah. could, and that is... Think about this, just saying that out loud. That's like mm. pretty incredible. There's some been amazing. There's some like yeah. There's some crazy NFL things that right. Are out there that so are- I'm talking about like the most significant sports story in our lifetime and maybe ever. Mm-hmm. That you could say it in our lifetime because it's going to be on everyone's. It's list. It's going to be there. Like so, in the unlikely event it happens, I get fucking goosebumps right now just thinking about that because like that is that is such a change. That will open up, like you're talking about like after that, the super cards that will open up, okay? You see a lot of this crossover stuff Fuck happening. yeah, I see, I see I see Anderson Silva fighting Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> They're both like 40 plus. Why what about not? Triple G? Knocking I, someone out. I see Triple G and uh, Bisping having a shit talk conversation and just, you know, sorting it He's out. He's a good I, boy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I see, you know, I, I see these like... Uh, these matchups we're not even considering right now mm. because it just doesn't make sense. Like right. one of the biggest things right now that Cain Velasquez can't do is he can't train takedowns right now. His knees are just fucking fucked, but he's right. like widely considered as one of the best heavyweights ever. Mm-hmm. Who wouldn't want to see Cain Velasquez or Junior Dos Santos versus, uh, you know, the Klitschko brothers yeah. or something like that? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Or yeah. put him against uh, Shannon, uh, the fuck. Let's go champ. But isn't the reality yeah, that like shit, the saying. level of boxing on these people is like an order of magnitude? That's what like, I'm trying it's to say. Such a yeah. singular skill. Th- that's where all this kind of that, like. That's where all I the, don't think it even the fantasy if, dies. Even I if know. he does it, even if Connor somehow doesn't, I don't think it means that like anyone who has done or had success in MMA has any business Absol- going into boxing. It doesn't. It's the classical. You know what I mean? Puncher's like, chance, but yeah. Even the gloves are different. Like to, exactly. to get knockout yeah. power in that first round, you know, ten ounce gloves. I'm trying to tell like people on the weekend because you know there's a couple of people I was ta- talking to that never watched at the them. wedding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, at, nice. the, at the wedding I was I'm seeing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, let me hold court and tell you. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. I can imagine you with like a circle <laughs> of people. I'm like, like listen up, smoking. Listen, you guys don't know. Yeah. Um, the, the bottle of Jack, bottle of Jack swigging. I was like, Let pouring me it on you your something. head. Yeah, MDZ. Uh, I was trying to tell him though. I was like, I was like, uh, the idea that um, any of this is even like kind of happening at all is like completely uncharted ground. So anyone's mm-hmm. trying to tell you like, oh, this is going to happen or this is going to happen, it's mm-hmm. like that that guy's selling you something. They they don't have the any, odds yeah. right now are plus five fifty Mayweather. Or sorry, minus five fifty Mayweather, plus three seventy five McGregor. Ooh, it actually went up for mm. Mayweather. That's on uh, that's as of June fifteenth on Bodog. Really, McGregor opened at like negative nine hundred yeah. or wow. plus nine hundred yeah. or something like that. So. That's probably a lot of people putting money on it because they're like, hey, what's there to lose? Yeah, you know what money, I mean. Money like, I think the odds. market kind of said like, well, we're not putting money See, on Mayweather. <laughs> the market corrected itself, yeah. and now people are starting to be like, oh shit. Like maybe, maybe there's like the amount of analysis between now and, and uh, August 26th is going to be significant. Mm-hmm. So when we look back on this in the future, let's make some wild predictions right now. I'll let Lingren start. Lingren, what do you think is going to happen? Decision, Floyd. 12 rounds? 12 rounds. Okay. Is that a win for McGregor though? Yeah. Decision? Yeah, I, I think, think so. if he survives. 12 round like, decision against arguably the best boxer uh, like in the world. One of the best, right? I think so. I think, no, he, I think he's. I think he's probably. Chalk it up you to could, a win. I mean, yeah. he'll be fifty and zero if he wins. <laughs> not too bad. Mm-hmm. Not too shabby. I mean, uh, I think. Uh, I think there's better records out there, actually, though. Way better records. But, um, or doesn't Roberto Duran have like seventy nine and zero or something? Oh, I'm not familiar. Something like that. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be an interesting fight. I'm pretty prediction. excited. Yeah. My prediction: uh, McGregor by question mark kick. <laughs> so just DQ. Yeah. So DQ. Okay. That makes like, sense. I don't think he wins that one. I'm no. like, yeah, yeah, no. no it's fine. Hilarious. Uh I'll take the easy one. First round, Mayweather. First round Mayweather? Mm. I think that would ruin MMA. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. And, no, no, I don't think I, it I don't does. really think it would I don't ruin think it. it but does. like I think that, that would like I think it, that'd be a black I think, eye. I think everyone is like a reality check of going, oh yeah, obviously. Just like going the other way. Yeah. It's like, obviously, that's yes. not like, 
oh, you swim? Do you ever try javelin? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, that's absurd, but like no, discus is, versus no, javelin, that's, right? That's like, not absurd. That's an it's excellent analogy. So, <laughs> hey, hey, you're an Olympian. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, have you ever done, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that? The biathlon? The, like where you, <laughs> you shoot? shoot yeah, it's like, I guess. And it's like, yeah, but like, like, aren't you like a water polo guy? Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like fucking crazy. Yeah. I think that'd be funny. Um, dude, I'm fucking psyched though. The amount of trash talk that that fight's gonna generate. Think about the, think about the level of press conferences that are gonna like. You're not yeah. into it. I, me, I'm into I, it. I'm I, into I, it. I can't say I'm not, but it's just at this point, like we've seen what McGregor is. You know, he's a great he likes fighter. Blue suits. You know, he, he just... is. He is a meme factory. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. he, he is. He is. I think he puts out consistently more memes than wins. Like he just, he's just, con- and he wins. Well, the guy doesn't fight enough to have that many meetings. But the money, you got to pay for him to get in the ring and do it. Yeah. You got to pay for him to do it properly, and, and they're going to fucking pay. Yeah. Do you think he'll, here's a better question. Do you think he'll fight again? In the UFC? Do you, uh, ever. Like he, um, he might clear he, more money in one paycheck than any, UFC any MMA fighter, fighter has yeah, in their has career. Ever, yeah. ever. Like he um, has like, uh, yeah, I, I don't. We're gonna see. We're gonna see the real Conor McGregor. I wouldn't. I don't care if he retires. I don't. I wouldn't blame him for it. You know. I mean, this is his money fight. This he is. He just this had is his, his first moment. child. He. Yeah. He would have broken new ground in many in both sports. Yeah, and I think it's I think great for people to retire young, especially from a sports fighter. Oh, yeah, you don't want to be a dummy see, later. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Who cares you if you have a hundred million if you have CTE? Yeah, absolutely. Like, so just I, I wouldn't. Brain. I wouldn't fault him in the least if he retired after this. Um, in fact, I think it's a good, good, good idea. I think, I think I have to agree with that. What do you think, Seymour? Well, like I was saying to Steve before, it's like when I saw McGregor fight and he just like kept, kept winning, kept delivering on his ridiculous promises, <laughs> etc. I was like, this it's guy's going to go like, this is a legend in the making. Meteoric. Like this guy could really do yeah. it. And he's just been faffing about like not defending faffing. not defending a whole belt just left it won a different one which is insane but it's like if he does this fight and retires he's memorable but he's not a legend you yeah. think he has to defend the title right i think he I think should most fight people. i think you yeah. should fight what your sport is you know what i mean like well they just I think stripped, it goes back uh, sorry go ahead sorry they just stripped uh Jer- Jermaine Durham, the fuck's your name the new uh the new uh, uh, featherweight right. uh, female champion. What's her name? Can you look her up what, real what, quick? What happened? They stripped the UFC women's 145-pound champion today because she refused to fight Cyborg. Straight I would up. refuse to fight Cyborg. I mean, I'm that's also not a big, Was it going to be at 145? Yeah, it was for the title. Like, they literally made that belt for Cyborg. Yeah. And then they had a Holly Holm and Jermaine Durant. I think her name's Jermaine Durant, Durant, Durant or Fuck, I can't remember her name. Um, but they stripped her today of mm-hmm. the title uh, because she ref- she literally refused to fight the number one contender. Jermaine Duram Dami. Dur- Dur- I don't know if that's. I've heard it pronounced differently. That I'm. I almost guarantee you that that's pronounced friend. differently. Jermaine uh, Duram Dami. It's like it's it's like that. It's one. It's not Jermaine. Like, it's Duram. It's Duram. Yeah. Jermaine okay. Jermaine Duram Dami or I don't know something like that. Anyway, she got stripped of the title today because she won't fight Cyborg. And Noted juicer, yeah, cyborg. The press release from Zufa, or not Zufa, I guess WME UFC, mm-hmm. is uh, it said very clear language like, you, if you applied this to Conor McGregor, they would have to strip Conor McGregor. Yeah. 100%. Because it said, uh, we believe in the integrity of the sport that the number one contender should fight the pinnacle of their division. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In order within to, a reasonable yeah, amount of time or whatever. Right, within yeah. a reasonable amount of time in order to yeah, pre- barring sp- yeah, injuries. In order to preserve the integrity of the sport. Now, I mean, unlike boxing, goddamn, like you'd have to think like how many fighters in the featherweight and lightweight divisions are just like, are you serious? Like, what the fuck? We've been held up for two years here. Well, have you been reading about Demetrius Johnson, Johnson lately? He's he, been putting them on last. He is. Here's the thing. Demetrius Johnson is saying exactly what they need to say right yeah. now. He is the kind of guy that they need talking right now because they're they're trying to shut him up so hard mm-hmm. they don't understand mm-hmm. that like this is how far behind wme is in this stuff they don't understand that he jumps on like a twitch live stream and gets like 300 400 000 viewers yeah. and i realize in twitch it's like that's a drop in the bucket to some channels but uh, mm-hmm. that's pretty good numbers no matter those, what your channel numbers, that's insane. pretty yeah, I, I get it but what i'm saying is like 
for That's converted fight fans. Like, because why else are they watching him for that sure. most part? Mm-hmm. You could probably make a case the majority of those are fight fans. Yeah. yeah. So if you have arguably enough people watching you, that would be considered a couple years ago a pretty decent buy rate for a, a pay per view. If you yeah. have 400,000 buy rate for, for a card, that's pretty significant. Mm-hmm. So if you think about that, and they're still putting this guy into the pay me no mind pile and they give him zero promotion. I, I don't I don't get it. This guy's about to break Anderson Silva's consecutive title defense record. Yeah. He has arguably the best all around game. Yeah. In the like it's just because he's like hundred and twenty five pounds. If he didn't yeah. fight at one twenty five, if he was Anderson Silva's way, if he was if he was fighting at uh one eighty five, he'd be the biggest thing on I the planet. I wonder why right that now. is. I wonder why there's so much uh you know, so much more interest in the higher weight divisions. Like, I know... Well, how do you what's feel? his that, finish rate? You know, the heavyweight is always the champion Sorry. in the world, right? You say? What's the finish... Like, what, does he... Is it decisions? No, I don't... I'm not... I no, know he finishes. Him, he, he does, does finish. finish. Okay. Yeah, it's not like... It, That's sometimes an issue, decision, find. Yeah, he's okay. not decision yeah. Dan or some shit like that. He's like... Mm-hmm. He's literally... Like, I'd say probably every third, fourth fight, he's finishing people. Like, he fucking destroyed yeah. Joseph Benavidez... Uh, a couple times <laughs> so like i don't know um well i guess what i'm saying though is like if they put the amount of marketing they put into if they put a quarter of the marketing they put in mcgregor into demetrius johnson mm-hmm. you're talking about a guy that like let's get real here he has uh his race appeal in that he can significantly turn urban markets that are maybe not traditional MMA markets because like the stereotype is like it's a bunch of tattooed white guys that watch it at the bar. Yeah. If you can convert markets that are not traditional in your your um, uh, demographic, right. that's significant. That's a major point right there. Mm-hmm. Another point they could put, point to is like he is the most dominant champion right now, period, active champion. Well, I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier, that we're in we're in a low point for legends. You know, he's the closest thing yeah. we have to a legend in the sport. Which is fucked. And I think it has a lot to do with the uh, the longevity of fighters. We, had, we used to have guys like Randy Couture that were fighting f- for their entire life. And yeah. now, you know, going back to what I said, I like the guys that retire early and, you know, take care of themselves. But mm-hmm. he's the closest thing we have to a legend right now. It's really... It really is telling. Mm-hmm. It really is telling when, when uh, I think like earlier, you're like, why do people not want to get into it? I think if I was to be honest with you, like, look, I'm like six, two and a half, six, three. I am, I'm, I fluctuate from like 220 ish to 240. Mm-hmm. For me to get behind a guy who's 125 pounds fighting weight, like even if he walks in at 140 or something like that, I, I have a hard time comprehending that, like in my head, as like why this guy is dangerous. But I, but you, but, you gotta but, watch it, and but yeah, still like, appreciate but it, you, hear, you hear the way I'm talking about him, though. Yeah, and like I think he's a fucking killer. He's yeah. a, he's a one of the most. You think it's because you can push him around like that? That's the thing. Like I'm not, maybe it is, maybe it is. That's the thing. I, don't know. I, I think it's. I think you see this. I think this is really. I think this is super significant. Mm-hmm. I think you see sometimes the highlights or like the casual fan that watches like. ESPN or whatever the fuck. If they watch highlights of the fights and they see that Demetrius Johnson once again defends his title with an amazing TKO victory, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. If they see that, but then in the highlight reel, they're showing the ref and it's like Big John McCarthy and he looks like five, literally five times Demetrius Johnson. That that kind of thing, I'm not saying that that's the only thing, but if you can imagine the arc of that throughout all the promos and I understand like what you're saying I just don't like it I've never heard that <laughs> you know I've never heard that you. argument before well it, what I'm saying is like it's obviously not the most significant thing there's a lot of factors in play but what I'm saying like is like they don't build them in the way that they should they things like that aren't mm. even considered you know like you gotta think about like when you're watching this with a generation or two removed from us mm-hmm. and they're watching on TV they're like the guys that think it's human cockfighting and then yeah. they watch it and they're like this guy's easily going to win. Why? Because he's bigger. They don't even get the science mm-hmm. behind mixed martial arts. And I mean, so, it is human cockfighting. Let's not. Yeah, let's get real. Let's get. It's fucking human cockfighting. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Jesus. Who said that anyway? Some fucking idiot senator in New York. Um, but uh, what the fuck was I saying? I, just, I lost my point. Oh, if they built these guys correctly, if you built if you it, you market like, them. You mean? Yeah, if you market them and build them correctly, if you had the right approach. Like, here's what I would do. I would take them to uh, uh, beyond the, like, 
doing one hour countdowns where you devote 30 minutes of it to the main event mm-hmm. and 15 to the co-main and you know 15 to the undercard right. like that's how they do it right now it's so predictable like that I would do what the fuck Demetrius Johnson is doing by himself. I would take the Twitch stream yeah. and I would say, look, let us monetize this for you. For every time you convert a pay-per-view sale from this Twitch stream mm-hmm. using this buy link, mm-hmm. we'll engage you directly. So then now Demetrius Johnson has personal influence into his buy rate. He can actually ask for pay-per-view points. He has all this stuff. Yeah. The things they're taking away from him for speaking out are like, you're never getting pay-per-view yeah, points. Yeah, exactly. Why the fuck would he ever give a shit about giving anyone on the Twitch stream any incentive to yeah. buy his fights? Why? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're going about this Yeah, and he's trying to market backwards. himself in this way. So how much of this is on Demetrius himself? Like, you look at me and Seymour were talking earlier, and, like, we're looking at, you know, what Conor McGregor has done and how he's, you know, he's getting all this money. And yeah. He, and it's because of his bravado. It's because of how he markets himself. And we were, we were talking that we saw this leaking in to, to other fighters because other fighters are seeing this. That's true. Yep. And saying, oh, that's Definitely. what I got to do. That's what I have to be to make yes. that money. But Demetrius Johnson isn't that guy. No, he just is like so cool. Yeah. So He's, how much is yeah. that him and how much is that, you know, the UFC's job of marketing? Them? Yeah. I don't know. Did you see him on Rogan a couple of months back, like a I year ago? It, no. He was really, really appealed to me. I was like, I never, I never actually saw him in that light before. Like mm. he's, 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 uh, he's just, he's an intelligent guy. He, he has a, he has a good idea of where he wants to take his career mm-hmm. and he's so chill. Like he's like, yeah, sure. No, but like, you know, yeah. like even when, I don't know, did you see a couple, like a month ago, he had to speak out because people may not know this, but when you fight for a belt in the UFC, uh, it's not like the belt, quote unquote. It's not like wrestling. Oh it's, yeah. It's not professional yeah, wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. It's in this. Yeah. Weird. So it's not. Yeah, so you don't like fight for like the world wrestling title or something like that. You don't take it from the other guy. Yeah, it, it's like you're fighting for that title that night. So mm. when you mm. win, oh, they okay. give they give you a title. Mm. So here he is coming yeah, up on action. like nine defenses his last fight, and he's like, "Yo, I got like a couple kids, and they have to fight over the belt because mm. I they they only ever gave me one belt." He's like, "How is it? I'm your flyweight, the only." flyweight champion of all time and i have nine defenses coming up and i only have one belt he's like meanwhile they're showing off uh like I think physical was, belt yeah and mm. i think they showed uh do so you actually take it from them did they bring it back to them they thing? ended up no, doing they, some oh like, i see they, they just, just make keep, a new one yeah. you just a new keep one. it yeah it's like a mold yeah like like i think i was like nah who the fuck would be a good example mm. like anderson silva is a good example he yeah. has like eight or nine belts mm. and they're all like middleweight title belts or whatever but like they're all you know, he's displayed or whatever. Um, actually, but well, those are defenses. Th- yeah. Okay. So this is how I think this came about. I might be wrong about this, but Cody Garbrandt, when he beat uh, uh, Dominic Cruz recently for the uh, bantamweight title, uh, Cody Garbrandt gave his belt in the ring and mm-hmm. the octagon. He gave his belt to like a Make a Wish kid or something like that. Mm. And he was like, "Hey, you're the whole reason I did my camp." And uh, it was very like a very yeah. cool, inspirational Great. moment. But there were people that were like, whoa, you, you just gave away the belt? Yeah. What do you mean? Like, this kid has to, like, show up every time with the belt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And people had to explain. Be like, no, no, no. It's like, he just got that belt. Yeah. And then he'll fight for another one. And it is kind of impactful, though, if you think about, like, it's his first world title. Mm-hmm. You know, and he gets to still, like, he still gave that away. It wasn't like he gave away his fifth belt or yeah, something like that. Yeah, no. So that's, it's still that's pretty, pretty significant. But, uh, yeah, the people but so Mighty Mouse, <laughs> But so he only has the one? They only ever gave him the one. I don't think he has any right yeah. now because he hasn't mm. even defended. So it's like he probably has to call that kid. <laughs> Yo, I'm coming over. I, bring <laughs> I got to do a photo shoot. Yeah, I'm bringing a photographer. No, I mean uh, <laughs> Demetrius Johnson. He's he only has one belt. Is what you're saying? No, they, they no, made it right. They did make oh, it. Right. Oh, okay, so, okay, but that's okay. A, I'm sorry. That's before he started speaking out. And but stuff, it's a good like, example of like being overlooked or being. Like, yeah, that's exactly around, it. Yeah. Like he is, he is already in this position where he's like, hey man, I gotta fight for mom and dad's time essentially mm-hmm. and here i am i'm like an honor student and i'm trying my fucking best and mom and dad don't give a shit about me mm-hmm. until i go and tell the teacher mm-hmm. and then the teacher's like give him a goddamn belt and they gave him like <laughs> eight belts so they did some like crazy black and white photo <laughs> shoot <laughs> give him a goddamn belt uh, they, they did like some photo shoot it was like eight or nine belts and he's like literally it's a lot of belts to get so, once. yeah and, and he's a little guy he's like 125 pounds mm-hmm. so it's like he's I bet you if you weighed them all up, he's probably 125 pounds. Oh, my God. I don't know how much the belt is. How much is the belt? Do you want to look that up real quick? How much One, does it weigh? How much does it weigh? One pound. Do you know what it weighs? No. Not top I think it's 
I think it's like it's probably different for different okay, weight let's class. Guess. <laughs> let's guess. Let's guess. I'm gonna say it's like 15 pounds. Assuming oh, I can no, even find no, it. No, no. Yeah, I think you'd be surprised. I think I think you'd be surprised. <laughs> uh, I think it's like 15 pounds. I'm gonna say the let's legit say, authentic one is like 15 pounds for sure. What do you think? What do you mean legit authentic one? Well, not like you know, all oh, this is a Walmart. No, of course. Or some I'll shit. say uh, four pounds. Four pounds. There's no way. There's four no or five. Way. It's like a bag of onions. <laughs> <laughs> Bring in the onions. Let's That's see. That's what they weigh it. They they go to <laughs> yeah. like they're like, well, it's good enough. No, they they don't. They just call it's it like, like the scales adjust yeah. this. It's one point. I don't even know if you can look this up. One point eight bags of onions. <laughs> yeah. <That's right. laughs> yeah. Who answers will tell us. God, maybe this is reliable. <laughs> the, this is definitely reliable. Yahoo answers. Chael Sonnen said twelve pounds. Oh shit! See, I told you. Um, but Chael's answer was, "I'm here to get twelve pounds of gold." And on August 7th, I'm going to get it. What a promo. So you're I don't not, know if... You're, you're going to take that. That's, that's, that's <laughs> what we're gonna, how we're going to settle this argument over something Chael Sonnen says. <laughs> Come on. I don't, believe promo. That, I don't believe that that's... The I don't know. <laughs> we were prices right on this. I think I win. I was closest. Uh, or was I over? Does that, that doesn't work. You win because I was over. I know I'm closer than you. There's it's no not way. You said, four, you said four I like pounds. that there's a Benji F. Seven years ago says mine weighs 12 pounds. But is an older version, 1990s. Maybe he bought it online. Older now, so mm. they're Benji. suggesting. Maybe, maybe you are closer. Maybe. I don't know. They're suggesting that the pre-Zufa era belt is uh, heavier. Oh yeah, absolutely. But Zufa had all the cash to make it beautiful. It doesn't mean it's heavier. Mm. I guess so. That's well, just, it doesn't you... mean anything, yeah. actually. <laughs> if you know the weight of the belt of the USC, let us know. Yeah. Yeah. Right in. <laughs> let us know, because goddamn, I have no idea. Uh, we we say I I stand by Chael twelve pounds. I love that his promo was so badass. He's like, I'm coming to get twelve pounds of gold, <laughs> and I'm not gonna stop. And it's just fucking so good. Uh, let me ask you this, Killer. Uh, have you been seeing the reaction online regarding the Tupac film? No. Nope. No. No. Holy shit. B- lots of backlash or what? Holy fuck! It's really bad. It's so bad that. Uh, Significant people. Let's see if we can pull this up. See, Mart, you want to? I don't know if you can sure. pull this up. Oh, on, give me a second here. Keep talking. Really keep the cam on me for a minute there. With, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so, significant people in real life within Tupac's life yeah, yeah. have spoken out and been like, "This is the wackest shit ever. This is like not at all just like, bad story. Yeah, this not, isn't like when not. NWA came out and mm-hmm. and everyone was like." Oh, uh, Straight Outta Compton is like the coolest movie. That, that well, was those how guys it was. were really involved with that, right? right? Yeah, right. Uh, everyone's like, oh, here we come. The All Eyes on Me is going to be the best, dopest film. Mm. Tupac's so popular. Eh, wrong. This, shit, this shit's going to see, like, I'm going to say right now, by the time this comes out, you'll know, but I'm going to say it's probably going to have a 60 to 70% decrease between Weekend 1 and Weekend <laughs> 2. Like, it's, like the reviews are so scathing. It's pretty bad. Uh, let's see. Do you got that pulled up there yet, bro? Yeah, I, I, f- I saw this article earlier this week. Show the uh, title here so everyone can see. Let's get it all ready. Uh, I'll explain it for our audio listeners. So basically, there's an article here that says, All Eyes on Me. The film roasted with I Left When Pac Jokes. So this is on Complex. And this is an article I was reading. <laughs> this is so bad. So basically, oh, this is what you oh, need your session buddy for, bro. exactly. <laughs> That's right. You need <laughs> to get rid of that pop-up. Bullshit. bullshit right there. Okay, so uh, this is pretty interesting. But... Um, this complex article, it says uh, there was a social media uh, that that like a bit of a viral campaign eventually mm-hmm. that came out that was like uh, people tweeting, I left the movie when, mm-hmm. like hashtag, oh, okay. I, I left okay, the POC movie when. Because it's just like there's so many historical inaccuracies. And not just really? like, not oh. just plot inaccuracies. I'm talking like Tupac's like, one of the ones that was I was laughing at the most was like I left the theater when I saw Tupac playing NBA 2K17, <laughs> like shit like that. Or it's like I, I left the theater when Tupac. Small things you gotta look Dude, over. Dude, I left when Tupac. First well, of all, hold on. Tupac didn't even like. You remember that Biggie line's like Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Biggie didn't even broke. see PlayStation. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like NBA 2K, like 2K. Like, what the fuck? Or with an iPhone or whatever. Yeah. Oh, had. yeah. Like, he had, like, an iPhone. That was the one. Yeah. That was the one. Well, they started Can to we become... They're just, no, because that website's fucking horseshit. Click the thing and scroll down. It's no, it can't see it because of the shitty website. Fuck complex. You guys got to get your shit together. 
How are we supposed to? I wonder steal if that's your product content? placements or if that's just a, no. A, so a, it's almost all nonsense. It's just the idea because there were some inaccuracies yeah. that people started to grow it to yeah. actually uh, make you be like, yeah. oh, I left when I saw him, you know, oh, okay. doing whatever, yeah. which is, I didn't left, happen. I left when I, the one I, I laughed at heart, this is what I maybe send it to you, but it was like, I left, I left when I saw Tupac delete Biggie from Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yo, unfollow. Yeah. <laughs> unfollow? Like, what the fuck? Like, so stupid. Yeah. Uh, does this work now? No, no, no. Let me just... Oh, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see, oh, I here see. Here we go, okay. Uh, the meme I machine. Left, I left the Pac... Are we looking at this now? Yeah, it pulls these up. Ugh. Here we go. Coming over. Is that on? Yeah. yeah. I left the Pac movie when he visited Obama at the White House. <laughs> Captain, I'm gonna... I left when Pac started playing Mask off on the flute. What the fuck? I left oh. when... Uh, look at that. This one's so good. Someone did the like. Look at this. This is the scene from All Eyes on Me when oh, Pac yeah, the, started. Instagram Live is like yeah. a big thing on this one. When he started previewing his new music on Instagram Live, like <laughs> what the fuck? This is dumb, man. Yeah, there's the unfollow. Uh, yeah, I left. I left when uh, the other theater when Pac unfollowed Biggie on yeah. Instagram. Cried. Dumb. Face. Dumb. It's uh, it's pretty fucked up that they could screw up such an easy story. It's such an easy yeah. story. And it's but it's compelling. It's, it's super amazing. And and I'll I mean, I haven't seen the movie. I'll I'll, I'll give it a chance. Yeah. That's I mean, a weird headline. I mean, it's right here. What is this? Is this the next article? Wheel of Fortune under fire for allegedly <laughs> depicting slaves during Southern Charm Week episode. What? What? That's Wheel all of we need Fortune. To know. That's all we need to know. Yeah. That was that was compelling in itself. That was yep. pretty good. <laughs> um, I don't know though. I think uh, it's such an easy story uh, for them to fuck that up. It's pretty straightforward. I'll tell you the most damning thing. You about, assume that people give a fuck. You don't. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> maybe as a non-hip. No, I'm saying. No, I'm saying people like. This would be like, like if they movies. came out with the Michael Jackson movie and then they like didn't talk about any of the child molestation, molestation stuff. They didn't. Uh, Which I, they wouldn't. Yeah. Enough, Which they could. wouldn't. Yeah, and he was in a plane with like Chubby Checker and shit like that. And you're just like, what the fuck? This is like historically way you're inaccurate. You're talking like you've seen the movie though. You're, I'm just you're going off all these memes oh, and you're no. like, oh, this movie is garbage. No, maybe but I mean like record maybe show. It's great. I don't need. But it's facts. like <laughs> is straight out of Compton like a, a completely accurate film? There is portions of it that I have gripes with, but the majority consensus. Is that it's pretty bang on. It's pretty bang on. Also, it was produced uh, entirely by a, in a co-op between Ice Cube and Dre. Fair so enough. they're going to be biased with how they portray themselves yeah. anyway. But the idea that Tupac's estate signed off on this shit and they didn't get it right is like kind of fucked up. Because here's mm-hmm. the most damning thing. But like when this I is so it, normal. Like Game of Thrones. Like obviously they yeah. fucked that up. Like everything. Yeah. No one cares. That, they just wait a minute. Up. But that should be. That should be the exception. That shouldn't be the rule. That like, is the rule. Yeah, I know, but just as something's fucked up doesn't mean that like the standards drop. Like I, as a fan, I wanted to see it done properly, and I think, I think they could have done some things differently. Here's the here's what I think is most damning though. So Jada Pinkett Smith, okay, at the time just Jada Pinkett, went to like went to school and was like very like, very close, very yeah. tight, and best friends with uh, Tupac, and so we're talking about a woman who ended up marrying Will Smith. And like like a very successful rapper and actor, of which Tupac was as well. So like, she's she's right in that scene. She, right. she knows all that stuff. Yeah. For her to come out and be like, this is wholly inaccurate and uh, is, does not portray any of this correctly. Mm-hmm. Like that. Uh, I don't know. I've seen her do interview spots about Tupac several times yeah. in different uh, productions, different documentaries, yeah. and she's always been so forthcoming and very. Very straight. Very like, genuine. Yeah, yeah, very you genuine. Can, you very, can really feel it off. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to agree with yeah. that. Yeah, and for her to come forward and be like, this is inauthentic, uh, that's pretty damning for me. Like, I, I hope people know that, like, if she says it's not good, you should probably take it from Like, she was there. Yeah. I would take that <laughs> a know? lot more than fucking... Instagram C-Mart. Tupac, oh. like I don't, you know, I don't want to listen. I don't want to like. Uh, it was all like, mm. like uh, California love, and then it's just like vote Schwarzenegger. Like that shit didn't happen. Like that was <laughs> not connected at all. Like you know. I guess I'm just not surprised. That's a, that's a problem. That's like classic. Yeah, but you, classic like you said, mainstream. They signed off it. I'm sure they got money out of it. So it's just. Yeah, but that's shitty. Like look at that. They fucking signed off. Probably their one chance to do it right. No, there's not one chance. What do you think they're gonna redo? Hollywood this film has shown now? us time and time again. 
that there's always thirst for redoing something that's it's already Tupac. been done. It's It's not Spider Man. They're not going to no, fucking do another one next. I don't month. know if they'll do another one, but they're going to make money off it anyways. So it's just it's disappointing. Is all I'm saying. Sure. Because you know what? Welcome to uh, 2017. Mm-hmm. Do you know what it also <laughs> was? You know what else was really disappointing for like a human biopic? Biopic mm-hmm. is uh, the Jimi Hendrix film i forget the fucking name of it but it was the one where andre 3000 from outcast did it. It. Mm-hmm. first of all casting wise looks amazing mm-hmm. he looks he looks exactly like Jimi mm-hmm. hendrix brilliant casting and then they couldn't license any of the music <laughs> that's, so, yeah, a, that's a that's a tough that's hurdle a major that's a hurdle pitch that's a hard <laughs> pitch that's a hard hurdle to mm-hmm. get over uh so you have these like approximations of like purple haze and yeah, oh, uh, foxy dirty. lady. That's and, dirty. Yeah. Uh, like I don't know. Like I think the only thing they could do was the American anthem, because <laughs> it was like public domain. <laughs> that yeah, was yeah. that was about the only thing they could do. Um, but it was just like think about that. That's that's a fuck up. Like who the fuck put money into that? Same person that probably thought it was okay for Tupac to have a Twitter account. I doubt the they're fuck. the same people. Yeah. By the way, I don't know if any of that shit's true. <laughs> <It> <laughs> looked, <laughs> from what I read on from what I read on that loose article none of it's yeah. true it's just somebody took an idea and yeah. ran with yeah. it yeah the meme culture of our world is this weird suckling leech thing that attaches itself to everything everyone else. we and just became a victim to it we you did just pull up the headline read it and then closed we're, it we're not that's even it. that's that's we're the not problem. even the secondary <laughs> in that chain though it's like here, here it's like content meme culture and then commentary called like we're the <laughs> we're the third in that chain yeah. and it, you know it's it's fucked it's just like this is the predictable pattern of how it's happening now it's like something fucked up will happen there's mm-hmm. a meme created of it either the meme floats or it doesn't mm-hmm. well, i think it's important and then yeah and fine as long as we acknowledge that it's nonsense yeah that's yeah. Our, yeah, it's like yeah, of course if the, you know what i mean like that article loosely mentioned I'm like eh, mostly didn't happen but i think that like it's important to go like None of that's true. Those things didn't happen in the movie. <laughs> I agree. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's ridiculous. And it's kind of funny. Especially if the movie's not that good. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, it is funny. Right? Like, so enjoy it, you know. Uh, I guess I'll check it out. <laughs> Watch it on video on demand or some yeah. shit. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, did you... I saw Power Rangers recently. Oh, you did after we heckled you? Is yeah, that what it I watched it. Um, this is, now, this is the Michael Bay Power Rangers? The whatever the most I don't know who was involved. Do you know who did it? Mm. I don't remember. I wa- anyway. I'll look it up. You, you, you it was. Uh, right, I'll look it up. <laughs> it was dumb on every <laughs> level, but it was pretty decent. Yeah. I gotta give it. I gotta give it like a solid eight. No, nice. And that, that's, that's not eight because what I liked wait, about wait, it. Wait, out of out of out of eight. I was gonna think it's <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like. Um, I thought you were gonna say sixty or at something. At some point, like, like in the at the beginning. Like they all gotta meet up to become the Power Rangers. Yeah, it's obviously, origin right? Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, then, but then it was like they didn't really ex- like they kind of explained some of them, mm-hmm. and like we had smoked a bunch of weed, but like you know, so I was paying attention, but I was kind of thinking about it. But then I kind of got lost in it, and I was like, "How are they all here?" And then we looked back, and it's like they don't really explain it. They're just kind of like, anyway, moving forward, they're all here, and yeah. fuck you. And I kind of thought that's kind of what the show did anyway. They yeah, didn't really I, I don't think they need things to. Yeah. Too many, like too closely. Are you saying I missed a nostalgia bus? I could have jumped on. No, it's still worth watching. It's it's actually I'm pretty fun. It. It's, a fun it, yeah. it's a fun yeah, movie. It's a fun movie. I love my power. It said it was. was uh, by the way, it says here it was produced by or sorry, directed by Dean Israelite. Israelite. Okay. Uh, he's a South African film director. He's best nice. known for Project Almanac. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they gave him the keys to the franchise, I guess. You liked it? I thought it was fun. I, I thought it was a lot of fun, actually. And it doesn't ask a lot of you. It just is like, are you ready for some dumb shit? Yeah. Get on board, pal. You're yeah. in. Yeah. Are you ready for some animals turning into machines? You're like, all right. Yeah. Just like Transformers. Don't say that word around here. Don't say that word. <laughs> this is a totally different franchise. We don't want to talk about that. Like, But it looks a lot like Transformers. Don't fucking say that to anyone, okay? Just relax. Don't, don't bring it up. There's some good moments, though. Like what? Just, Break I don't know, down, just break. when they're becoming like, the uh, chances of me when they're learning, they're like, <laughs> when they're learning that they're powerful because they found their fucking gem things and yeah. they're like, and they meet up and there's like a scene where they're all like learning that they're the strongest or so like, oh, I might as well hang out together and they're like jumping in pits and like swimming around. Like rock pits? Yeah, like, I don't know, just like, just doing okay. weird stuff. Let me it's give you a couple, dumb. let me give you a couple like TV show questions and you tell me, you can tell me and Steven Lingren here if this is some of the stuff we can expect from the show to be populated in. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there like a Zordon 
Like a yeah, giant Zordon's, yeah. A yeah, giant Zordon's a big thing, yeah. yeah. Alpha. <laughs> Rita's so Zor- escaped. Actually, I would say Zor- she makes her monster grow and everything. Really, yeah, I actually I would. That. Zoran is actually one of the most well done parts of the movie. Wow, I would really? say it's really fun because, like in the show, it's that that weird like column of blue with his head there. Yeah. yeah. But in this one, it's like this big surround monitor, and he kind of like comes out of it, and like I don't know, it's like oh, and like so 3D. and so he can like kind of come around. So as they're standing anywhere, he can kind of like swivel around to them and come and like confront them, and mm. like oh, that's it's pretty. pretty cool. It's actually pretty neat. Do we know yeah. anyone that worked on that CGI? I feel like every film that comes out, we know someone. I don't know. Now. Um, I don't know where that was pretty cool. It, but yeah. Zordon, did they have Alpha? Oh, he's a big yeah. He's Alpha a thing. Five is he annoying as fuck? Uh, no, he's pretty normal. Just like is he played by Josh Gad? I don't know who that is, but <laughs> probably not. It's not surprising. Hey, is there Goldar? Oh yeah, Goldar was the most badass dude. Is he, he like I the lion like, enemy? He's like he was like Rita. Rita's first yeah, I don't head. I don't think so. I don't really? I don't recall Goldar that. Was so badass. You he know what it might be? You know I don't. Again, it was a. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, lot was, it a, a lot was here. going on here. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just, saying, like, just holding this feature of the fire. Yeah. Tell us about Goldar <laughs> right now. I don't. Be, I don't. I can't. He. She had some like lackey minions, but I can't recall yeah. exactly who it was. We also watched right after it. We watched an episode of the Power Rangers, so it bled together, uh. and so now I can't recall what was actually the oh. show and what was the what was the movie. Yeah. Show. Jesus. Um. Did they reuse any of like the main no. plot arcs of like they didn't have like a White Ranger or some shit like that? No, none of those okay. motherfuckers came in. All right, you're kind of selling me on this a little bit. It was fun. I recommend I'm it. I'm definitely way more into it now than I was five ten minutes ago. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely thought Michael Bay directed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, I've it, never seen any of those Transformers. Not I, even the first I, one. No, I've never even hmm. seen like a scene other than the trailers when I watch right. other movies. They're long. They're really long. They're long. They're really long, and at this point, I don't even know. Like, I'd have to dedicate a weekend to like sort myself out. Skip it. Skip it. <laughs> Just rewatch Lord of the Rings. Yeah. You're probably like <laughs> same amount of time. There's a few major franchises I've never fucking watched. Like, I've only seen the first Pirates of the Caribbean. Never seen any. Skip it. Skip the rest. Yeah. Nothing. Not, I'm not missing. It's a good any. one. First one's great. Did yeah. Watch the most it's probably safe movies, to keep going. Yeah. You didn't watch the most recent one with Javier Bardem no. as the bad guy? He looked badass. Mm-hmm. The story, I thought, face. became way more complicated than I thought it would ever be. Like some, I, like isn't I watched he just like, like a, a third. He's a pirate and he's Johnny Depp. Like, isn't that just like the... No, the there's plot? a lot no, of recurring... No, because they like, kind of allude to Treasure Island type stuff. Like and... Robert Louis Stevenson? Yeah, like it's... Really? Yeah, I don't know. So there's like a black beard in this motherfucker. Mm, mm-hmm. Yeah, but he's a squid beard. Oh, that one. Isn't that like the third He's like hour? a main guy. See, I've never watched any of this shit. Anyways. <laughs> Dude, I don't fucking know. I was a couple friends. Like, is there franchises, though, you just wholeheartedly avoid? Steven Linger. Mm, no. I mean, I'll give anything a chance. There are... This is, a, this is an actor looking to get booked, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, he's, yeah. Like, he's like, let me tell you, he's like, there's no such thing as bad movie. Yeah. Like, right. And his, check uh, his, yeah, and his agent's number is 604. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but like... I don't know. Like, is there something you missed? How about that? Not that you avoid, but like, is there is there um, a franchise you like you just didn't get into? Everyone else watched it, and you're just like, ah, I have no idea what that's about. I can't think of it off the top yeah. of my head, but I know there are. Like, did there... you watch Twilight? No. I never even seen a single scene of Twilight. No, I mean that's I, not true. And not on some that's like you're macho. I don't watch Twilight. Yeah. I just mean like you've seen. A no, scene I mean, of I didn't that. get into Pirates of the Caribbean, although I really enjoyed the first one. But you know, after that, I just. Just fell off. Couldn't be bothered, you know. I don't got time for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to put it together. Uh, what else? Uh, I think uh, probably most sincerely, I am uh, I'm stoked to be hanging out with my buddy Stephen Lindgren because <laughs> uh, it's been a fucking while, man. It's been a long time. When you you were the first person to reach out within like 30 seconds, when I, I posted on social media the other day because we had our cat sitter fall through. And I was like, we had a service all lined up. And then at the mm-hmm. last minute, they hit us with all this, like, oh, you need, like, a vet note. You need this and this. And I'm like, where the fuck was this conversation before? Like, we're oh, about really? to leave, you know? Like, And they're like, no, no, no. So we had this, like, vet cert, like, this uh, sitting service, like, fall through. And so I was like, uh, okay, I'm going to harness the power of social media. Let's see yeah. what this 
podcast can do. <laughs> just, Probably insurance. Yeah. And here know, I am thinking like, here I am thinking like, I'm going to have to take a massive leap of faith here with like a stranger and hand them keys. And the first person to respond mm-hmm. is probably a guy I've known longest in my life. Mm-hmm. Right away. You're 30 seconds. Not even. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. pretty good. I appreciate that. Not a problem. You have two cats of your own, right? Yeah. Uh, Aries and. Aries and Zoe. Zoe. Yeah. So boy and a girl. Yeah. What kind of cats are they? Uh, they're one's uh, Zoe, the younger girl, is a pointed lynx, I think they're what? called. What? And one's just a long-haired mutt. Oh, sorry, like a lynx? Like a legit they're, they're lynx? They're called no, no. They're that's just the name of the breed. It's a pointed lynx. And again, it's the rescue cat, like. and this is what uh, my girl Eileen has, you know, figured out what it is. Seymour's gonna pull this up here real quick. A pointed lynx. Yep. That second picture is exactly it. This one there? Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're pretty. Mm-hmm. That's a beautiful kitty. That's awesome. Look at that, folks. And that's and it's hilarious because uh, we also have a chihuahua that loves the little one damn, but you have hates a, you have the a big dog? one. What's, yeah. your, uh, what's your chihuahua's name? Bailey. Bailey. Yeah. Are you picking these names? No. I don't <laughs> think you're picking any of these names. <laughs> I, I picked Aries. I picked Aries. The God of War. You did that makes sense. God of War. <laughs> yeah. By the way, it's just like super disparate, like yeah. super gap between those names, disparity. Yeah. Uh, we were talking off air about uh, joint Facebook accounts and <laughs> yeah. just laughing at people that have them. Like that's the worst thing. <laughs> like what the fuck? Like I think I would rather take a toaster bath than fucking do that. That is like the <laughs> dumbest thing. You should that's just pretty harsh. You should just castrate yourself. Why, like, why would you even subscribe to that line of thinking? Like, when people are like, I don't know, I can understand it. If you don't really care about social media, if you don't care, I, 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 know, I think it's whatever. Like, if you're not even posting already and they make yeah. the account for you or something, whatever. I, I that's your road, I guess. But like, but if uh, you have an account and they make you quit it or something or like merge, <laughs> you quit has it? that yeah. ever happened? I'm sure. That my, has, I'm okay. sure in this I'm room sure that has know people. No, yeah. I don't. I for certain. I don't know anybody, but I know that that has I know, happened. It I has know at happened. least at least two people, and two different who cults. have been forced off of their own social media accounts to I wouldn't, be in a joint account. I don't think they'd ever admit forced, but there's no way that they, they did have been it on persuaded. Their own. Yeah, like heavily. Like so that's a red flag. <laughs> as soon as someone <laughs> asks you to do that, you gotta be. You gotta start looking that's inwardly. The thing. Mm. That's the thing, Seymour. Is they wait till you're married. And then they start throwing you things like, oh, you know, you go out a lot. Like, how about we spend three nights at home a week? And you're like, okay. That's pretty so you, reasonable. So you give yeah. that in. You, <laughs> you, you, yeah. you give into that. How about seven? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're, yeah you're, you're, like, you're like, okay, I'll give into that. That's pretty reasonable, right? And then they're like, hey, when you're home, uh, we should go through your social media. Make sure uh, we catch up with everyone. And you're like, this isn't something I do with someone else. But okay. I also that don't. like you're speaking from experience. No. Who's yeah. them? Who's no. them, MD? No. Have you Jeez. asked Liz to do I have this? The be- actually, <laughs> yeah, that, are you trying to get me. Liz to quit her account? <laughs> is that it's what you're me. doing? Yeah, it's me doing it to Liz. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, hilarious. That, what, what That's a twist. the only way it's happening. <laughs> yeah, what, this is me. I feel like you've practiced this. This is me running the game by you guys. See how you guys. Does this work? Does this work? This is my temperature And you got to work on that. I'm like, what do you guys think? about maybe three days a week <laughs> <laughs> what about if i had the keys yeah and you didn't yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're like you know how you have house keys wouldn't it be safer if we just had one because what if one yeah. gets lost and we're i like, had it uh like but yeah. what how do I i'm always home? home before you yeah that's why exactly wouldn't it. i let you in that's exa- this exactly <laughs> it. or like that's this, some savage or like shit. this you know babe it's just the two of us at home we don't need a bathroom door that we we need to we need to really this is getting weirder let's get serious yeah that kind of thing i'm sure we know couples like that not me <laughs> without bathroom doors i'm sure we don't, I don't know Fuck. i'm sure we don't i don't know i do know about this one couple though uh they were on and off again mm-hmm. for a while and uh one of their on periods was to go away they went to like this fucking like crazy whatever like spa thing or something mm-hmm. and uh, house no, not okay. nearly the quality of photos. Okay. Uh, but they went to some spa thing. And uh, I guess at one point in their previous on portion of the relationship, they had crossed that bathroom line where, like, they're just, mm. like, dropping deuces in front of each other and stuff. And Okay. Yeah. I happens. guess, like, on some level, that's for some people. But for them, they realized in their on and off again, mm. at going, going off, dating, and then going back on again after, like, dating and not having those lines crossed again mm-hmm. like you realize suddenly you're like oh there's like a 
magic here that will never ever you know like like there's there's a certain sorcery that you've dispelled of your relationship that will never be back and uh that's why joint accounts are stupid. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> My Lord. Wow. Steve wow. Lindgren, you're an amazing guy. <laughs> I love you, bro. How can people follow you? I like we're you? not even going to dive into that. No. That statement nah. you just made there. Okay. All right. right. I was we'll like, that and that, that's a couple. I have no idea what they're up to now. I, I haven't talked to them in fucking, I don't know, 10 years or some shit. Uh, Steve Lindgren, you're, you're a great guy. You're spectacular. Your agent's number 778442. <laughs> uh, how that's, can people uh, follow you if they're so six, inclined to do so? It's only six numbers. Just Facebook, Stephen Lingren. Uh, Simple as that. Straight up. The only one in the world? How that's do you spell Lingren? That's not true. L-I-N-D-G-R-E-N. Stephen with D-G P-H. is tough. Stephen Lingren. He's a, he's a great guy. We love him. And uh, if you're so inclined to do so, we'd love it if you guys enjoy the show. If you leave us a review on iTunes, it's super easy. If you have an iTunes account, just go and find our podcast. Search Intergalactic Interviews and go and give us a good or bad review. You can give us a medium review. I'll take three <laughs> out of five. That's probably accurate. Eight out of eight. We'll t- yeah, we'll take <laughs> eight out of 60. Eight, it's eight <laughs> yeah. out of 60. Yeah. yeah. Eight out of eight or whatever arbitrary number you want to give us i don't give a goddamn just give us uh, a review because that that helps us out more than anything if you want to help out the show that helps us out tremendously we appreciate that so go ahead and uh, search us up and if uh, you're so inclined if reviews aren't your thing if you don't want to come up with like a weird paragraph about us or something you can go ahead and uh, just follow us just go ahead and follow us on uh, uh, itunes and stitcher and youtube and i guess soundcloud but i wouldn't and uh, <laughs> that's about it. Yeah, we love you guys so much. Oh, uh, one more thing. Uh, Seamart, how can people follow you if they're so inclined? I just wouldn't. And that's the show for this <laughs> week, folks. Uh, I want to announce next week's guest, but uh, I want them to show up, so I won't announce who it is. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, you've been great. Hopefully we can do a show next week. Hopefully we can do a show on time next week. Yeah. It's fucking great. And uh, sorry, folks, for the upload times the last two weeks. It's been goddamn crazy. So <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll leave you with that, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Right Thank on. you, Stephen Lindgren. Thanks for having me.